and live from Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> Welcome to the Whiskey Roundtable. We are your hosts. Big G. Karen Helen Keller. Doc Dunbar. And I'm Albert Santilli. <laughs> All right. He's back. Yeah. Albert's back in the house. All right. <laughs> North Coast Jazz Ensemble. What's so, um, yeah, he's you're dre- actually dressing more conservative than before. Yes. So tone it down. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, my goodness! Uh, so, so, yes, <laughs> I'm conservative these days. So, but, well, enough about that. Well, we're here. But yeah, we're here. Oh. <laughs> well, here I can go to the other one. It's here good to be back. Man, thanks right, for having me. Here's on the your show. camera right there. All right. <laughs> That's a very nice jacket. Did your mom make that for you? <laughs> huh? no, grandma? Was, I think someone told me it's. You Scotch stole your grandpa's suit, didn't you? No, no, no it's all yeah. Scottish and stuff. Oh, well, my grandpa, yeah. Shout out to my grandpa, Grandpa Jackson. Amen. He's doing well. Right. I hope all he's doing better, for sure. Grandpa's a great guy. Had a little issues this week, but hopefully he's getting better. So we'll see what happens. So. Welcome so back, brother. Yeah, yeah, it's me, guys. Welcome back. It's good to be back. Um, you, n- you, n- you never show to disappoint, that's for sure. <laughs> Did you get beat up when you wore that shirt and suit in school? Oh, no, man. <laughs> I got laid. <laughs> yeah. Looking sharp, Hawaii, looking maybe. Sharp. <laughs> Too oh, funny. funny. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, we got to beat that out. I forgot. I got to be careful. That's all right. No Dude, you're fine. Yeah. You're fine. We have no filter here. <laughs> it's good. It's always, it's always good to get a new suit. I, I just I got some new orthopedic shoes. Did you? Yep. I didn't think they would help, but I stand corrected. Oh, dear Lord. That's why I bought the condoms. <laughs> what? Bigger, bolder, orthopedic. You haven't heard of that yet? That's the newest thing out. No, they, you need those. Bigger you and bolder. You definitely need them. You know, they had at least a quarter inch. I'm telling you. I'm like a fucking monster <laughs> now. Instead of a field mouse, uh, yeah, you're what? Well, mosquito. <laughs> 25% increase. Amen. Oh, hey. A lot of people don't know this except the pe- people that heard it. Remember that time Greg comes over and I'm having trouble with my tractor. It got stuck in the mud. It's not a joke. It's absolutely true. He grabs the tractor and lifts it up off out of the mud and like sets it over and goes... And all the neighbors are like, what's going on? Here? And he's just like, here, if you like, call me if you need me, I'll see you. And he walks and he just disappears into the woods and I didn't see him again. After he disappears that. in the woods like Bigfoot. <laughs> like Bigfoot. I was like, thank you, though. You know what I'm talking about. It was a couple of years ago. I do ago. remember that. That's hilarious. Remember. We're going to have to start calling you Daryl. Daryl. Right. <laughs> yeah, I want to invite Daryl on the show. Big G. I'm already here. Yeah. Oh, dear. Big G for president. So hey, hey you, I need you to move over because when I go to the other camera, it's like it. half of you. Okay. Get in, get in here, G. Come on, get in there. Tell get us. in there, son. Okay, there you well, go. While you're at it, tell us what you're smoking. Yeah, what are you smoking? I'm smoking a Maduro La Flora Dominicana. Double Leggetto. This is probably one of the strongest cigars you'll ever smoke. Si, it's muy delicioso. Yes. I love, I like a good cigar. Maduro. I want Dude, to know I'm smoking it. I've been smoking El Barracho. Barraco? Barracho? Barracho. Mm-hmm. Barracho. I think it's like a Espanol... But anyway, it's actually Spanish for drunkard. Drunk. It means drunk. El Barracho. The drunk. Barracho. El Barracho. Thank you. El Barracho. And, uh, yeah, those are very good. If you, if you see them at Dave Somrock's place, you know, the, um, unfortunately, I'm not smoking one of them tonight. I got a Padron. Oh, this is the anniversary series. El, El Presidente oh, Natural. El Presidente, yeah. El Presidente Natural. So I'm about to sm- join you. That's if you a great mind. cigar. It's a very, very good cigar. If you know about it, talk about it. So, uh, where, where you been? What are you doing? Talk to me. What's going yeah. on with you? Well, everything's going great. Uh, it's good to be back. Seriously, I just took a position in Twinsford very recently. Um, I, I am now the adjunct piano instructor at the uh, the Family Learning Center for Music in nice. Twinsburg, Ohio. Cool. Nice. Mm. So you can, if anyone wants to learn so piano instruments, I'm there. I've been following you on Facebook. So you you've been all over. You played with some great groups, man. I mean, you you know, I mean, it's you, every week you're somewhere else. Well, you, that, you know what it is, man. COVID and everything. Everyone's hurting right now. Sure. So I was very happy to take that teaching position. And shout out to Vince and his wife uh, Luann over at the Family Learning Center of Music. Nice. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know. I used North Coast Jazz Ensemble is still a thing. I got a rotating cast of musicians, and I was in that 60s soul band, whatever, whatever. So, 
Nice. Well, I mean, I see you're all over the place. Are you tra- are you traveling like you did before or no? Because of COVID, that took a hit too. You know, every everything these. I mean, you're all over. You're all Florida. You're all over California. You're everywhere. I'm just curious. So exactly. So what they're doing now is, as you already know, we're telecommunicating. It's all on the interwebs. Where the doctors and lawyers, they're all meeting up through Zoom or YouTube or this. We're telecommunicating, just like we're doing now. Right. So, um, the same is true for these concerts, man. Although it's just not quite the same. So if anyone's watching right now, thanks. Just keep supporting the arts. Absolutely. And you can tune into live concerts all over the place. Absolutely. It's just hell, what of, hell of a pianist, man, for sure. Absolutely. I like your suit, man. You're all ready for Scotch Month, aren't you? Grazie. Yes. <laughs> that doesn't sound Scottish. When I got the letter. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not Scottish. All right. Good. Just yeah, say hi. <laughs> all right, guys. I love it. I want to make sure we're still live because I hit something here. Uh-oh. 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 Aaron's oh, working lady. over here. I don't know what happened. Someone can reach out to us and let us know if we're still going. That would be wonderful. That's yeah, still early, so we didn't miss anything. We didn't oh miss no, we didn't miss anything. No. But I was trying to get the feed in here for the uh, comments, and then it just uh, it went away. All right. Well, we'll work through it. It is what it is. We're going there. We're going there. All right. Some space dust. Oh, it says live now. There you saddle. go. I'm sure it's working, man. It just takes a while. Okay, here we are. There you are. Oh, wait. Nope. Not on OBX, so you're on okay, let me take off the sound, and then I can watch. Okay. You know, All right. We have so many fans and listeners, you guys. You know, good for is you. Is that you, too? Jammed up the whole system. Yep. <laughs> Where's it? There's our there Okay. Go. All right. All right. Cool. There we are. I think I'm back. I know. We're not sure what happened, but... Um, Okay, let's see. We've got a few people out here. Jennifer Boggs is out there. Hey, girl. Jennifer, what's up? And Lindsay's making a comment about your suit. That's uh, Doug's daughter. Yes. He's in Scottish plaid. Good man. Yes. Uh, Steve Williams says, hey, guys, and welcome back. What's up, brother? Albert. What's up, brother? Hey, Steve. What's going on, man? Steve taught me how to drink scotch, by the way. Did he really? I swear. I taught Steve how to drink scotch. Okay. All right, so I'll go back to you. He didn't know. He couldn't even spell scotch. You know how the black people are. They couldn't oh, tell you. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, uh, Liz and Sidecar are watching. They said, hey, hey love you. What's up, kids? Sidecar, I miss you, brother. Liz, I miss you, too. I miss you more, Liz, than I miss Ralph, just so you know. Um, I think everybody misses Liz more than they miss Ralph. Yeah, oh, so. God, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. God, yeah, that's for sure. Tell you, the only thing I miss about Ralph is he used to do the dishes. <laughs> Sidecar. <laughs> now you have to do them. What's up, now Ralph? I have to do them. Thanks, Ralph. I miss yeah. Ralph, too. I haven't seen him in a while. Ralph's a great guy. It's been guy, a while man. since I'll tell you what, yeah, in, in my moved out of the way. darkest hour, he brought me back. Him and John Dunbar, for sure. No, no ifs, ands, or buts. Dude, let me reel it back in, though. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Steve Williams. Right. Mr. Williams, to me. Right. He taught me, so he was saying to me that when he drinks scotch, mm-hmm. he rolls it straight over the tongue or like right. lets it sit on the tongue for a while and it rolls off the side of his tongue and then just, you know, once it gets warm and like he'll swap, you know, he swallows. Like, um, right. But I've been experimenting with different ways of tasting it like that. And mm-hmm. it, was, I, I, it was him for, that opened it up to me. For, for years, my brother has, uh, uh, even when I was in Texas and all that stuff, he wanted me to try all this great, great stuff, and I was just, like, so opposed, because I was a beer guy. And, uh, you know, and it, it started over a bottle of Bullet. So, I mean, that's that's how it got started. But, uh, you know, we were sitting down here a lot of uh, Sundays uh, when Steve was in Ohio for a short minute, and uh, we watch all the playoff games and this and that, and I started drinking some bourbon. Joe, Joe as well, Joe Clark as well. Uh, same thing, but... Uh, yeah, so this is what uh, we've developed into. So, uh, and give Joe his props and my brother his props. That's how I got started, man. That's what it is. And then I'll j- just drink anything, so. Amen. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, Karen, thanks for the beer. Was... Oh, swing. You got it. Oh, well, matches your Helen suit. Keller, man. Show that. <laughs> I got a little something, something over here. It's a little something I've awesome. Is this California? It's another malted barley product. So, oh, it's uh, Californian. In, uh, in, uh, oh, you're going to the other one. Okay. Little something in that, honor of Robert DeGazio. Does that say Little Limp? What's that say? It says <laughs> Karen's right here. Oh, my God. oh, shit. You ain't playing, son. Oh, no. Don't we miss him? We do miss him. <laughs> you. 
Hey, if you want, I can throw the other neighbors out. I can get them out of there. Yeah, in a minute. yeah, yeah. And about two weeks, they'll be gone. It was fun when we first started out on the show together. I would just have to walk home. <laughs> yeah. so, True story. And it was a long walk home for you many long times. Walk home, you know, now sometimes it took you know, three days to leave my yard. <laughs> we are very moderate these days, but that's okay. Nah, Enjoy responsibility. Tastes good. Welcome back. Happy man. to be here. Welcome yeah. back. Yeah. Welcome back, man. Love you. So, uh, Lindsay, uh, Cameron and Lindsay, is that mm-hmm. Lauren? Lauren. Lauren. I'm sorry, Where's Lauren. Lauren. I screwed up your name. She's watching. All right. Hey, um, Lauren. And I cannot say this. It must be Scottish. So I'm going to have you. Uh, Kil- uh, Kilcoman. Oh, yes. I, and I can't see. Yeah, Kilcoman. What's the Senag? Senag. Senag. That's what, yeah. I have some of that that uh, actually Lauren got me for Christmas. And I've just got about a third of a bottle left. But I'm very... If you like Islas, like I do, very it's, it's a very much <laughs> an Isla, very powerful, peaty, and very dark. Well, very that's dark. what she likes. She likes those. Yeah, yeah. Peaty yeah. scotches. Yeah. So. She's very knowledgeable as well. She's yeah, fun. She likes. Uh, well, she she likes all the all the single malts. So. For those who don't know, cool. what is peaty? What does that mean? Peat. What is peat? Peat. Peat is peat is, peat? Uh, peat is a. Um, basically, what if if you gave nature enough time, I, I extra heat and pressure would become yes. coal. But it's it forms in bogs where you got low amounts of oxygen. Actually, be on the Whiskey Wizard next week. Well, it's not coal though, is it? Like moss? It's moss. It's like a picture, sort almost of. like a moss that now is compacted into what's like almost like a clay. Okay. And they okay. cut it out, they dry it, and then they throw. It, and it's a fuel. It uh, it's for for. Uh, centuries it was the main fuel source in Scotland. Oh. So when they use that peat to dry the malt, that flavor gets imbued into the malt and then that's what causes the peat flavor in whiskey. All right. All right. Good stuff. Learn something new. Anyway, we'll Let's talk go. about that next week on the Whiskey Wizard. This week we'll be talking about something else. Uh, about Sorry. the malt. Los, los yeah. <laughs> well she got in there, right? Uh, we got G Money. G money, uh, right? We, we hung out with uh, Greg and Derek Rolling Smoke Barbecue this yep. past weekend yes, at yes, we uh, Ro- uh, Royal Havana Cigars. We did. I got. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I'll surprise Greg. Well, we'll tell him now. He'll probably already know. So I got uh, Greg some fresh rolled Cuban cigars, and I'll drop those off to him this week. So I didn't get him the uh, the long cigar, but that's in due time. But so I got a couple cigars. Right. Him as well. We might as well. Yeah, about dive it. in, son. You, what different, you Greg. You, different, Greg. Different, Greg. Uh, what are you going to smoke? One of them Lanceros? No, no, no. This is too good right now. Oh, the, that's, the, the, say, El Presidente Padron cigar. cigar. I'm very happy. Amen. I mean, I have no complaints that's a, so far. That's a box press, isn't it? Or no? And, well, it looks like it, yes. Yeah, and, it I, and I don't think press. it's going to... I think it's going to get better, if it, anything. It, it's a great cigar. I've smoked it several times. Steve has smoked it several times. Actually, Steve is the one who turned me on to that cigar. But this is what you were talking about. It's a Lancero. Similar to what you were talking about? Yes, yes. Cuban. No, smoke that cigar. You save that for later. That's the same cigar. One's, they're, they're, they're both hand rolled. They're, they're both hand rolled. So one, one, the, the the one you have on top that you're smelling was rolled <laughs> on Saturday. The other one was rolled on Sunday. He must have been tired, but easy. Hey, son. whoa, sorry, man. Easy, son. <laughs> then you know. Bugs yeah, Bunny over here. Easy, easy, Brock. I'm listening to you. Oh. Listen. <laughs> This one, man. who's yeah. drunk when they rolled this one? Yeah, so both good cigars. Okay, right. same cigar, same cigar. Thank the cigar you. Event well, was, cigar event was fantastic. That's a good segue into what are we tasting? Today? What are we tasting, kids? What are we tasting? We are tasting uh, Glenn Roth's Maker's Cut. Right. Did I say that right, Glenn yes. Roth? Glenn or Ross. Glenn Roths or Glenn, Glenn Ross. Ross. Uh, either way is fine. I've never had Just this. like you can say Maybe. Glenn Morangi or you can say Glenn Morangi. It's like you know. tomato, tomato. Yeah, exactly. Kind of. There you go. You know, I'm not on Facebook anymore and uh, I got kicked off for unknown reasons. You got kicked but off? I, I've been. political I, stuff, man. I'm, I'm anyway. on borderline of being in jail. He's trying to. Dude, dude. Trying. But the makers, so is this? does this have anything to do with makers? It's just called Makers. Cause makers. Because mm, I got a lot of flack from the co-op when I was on Facebook. I my, One of my favorite drinks is Makers Mark. 
you know, yes. you know it's no, no. Maker's no Mark is a bourbon. It's a whiskey. It's this American. is this is American. This is this is, this the, is Scottish Scotch. It's okay. a Glen Roth. I'm excited this is a to try story this. and the. They just happen to name this particular release the Maker's Cut. So my, my so I'm sure Karen will tell us why. Hey, good enough. And, and we will. I just want to, and I might be wrong. I just want to throw it out. But uh, this bottle, and along with this style of bottle, and all the different blends that uh, Glen Ross has, is going away. They're revamping their whole inventory. So Are they really? I'm, I'm, hopefully that's in the news. If it's, I mean, in the. Is that uh, why I'm buying that other bottle that you got? That's why you're buying another bottle, I got. So I, I may uh, grab two more bottles. I want to have one to drink and one for the museum, if you will. And uh, we'll go from there. And if, if we get into a jam and we need to open a bottle, we always have an extra one. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Well, by the way, it's brought this Glen Fittich 15. If you want to open a bottle later, we will we will open okay. it. Is that not open? That's, you, that's a good one. It's oh, a, we just opened it. We, maybe we did a little... We, we, will, uh, we, have, we, we have the we have the experiments down, Greg. But yeah, <laughs> it's the fresh right. bottle for you. Okay, okay. We talked about that. I no, did. Uh, we did. I sent you home with the bottle. I said I wasn't a fan, and then because uh, I'd only ever tried the twelve in my whole life, and then I started trying some other ones, and decided I liked them. So. Make sure Joe Boo doesn't get that while it's yeah, sitting don't get there. Joe Boo, get a, you know, we need to get the bats. Uh, we need to get the bats a run in. Yeah. This is our old friend Rob's one of his favorite go tos. Is it? You know, oh, for the price it? and everything. It was like Ford versus Ferrari or whatever, right. you know. But uh, you know, he 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 kinda whispered in my ear a few weeks back. He's like, Yeah, if you're gonna grab a bottle of scotch, get just one fitted Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not we'll look forward you, to that. What are you showing me here? I'm just Glenn trying here? to figure out if you know who this is. Brad Barbecue Glen, love Glen Rose. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Somebody, from, somebody from uh, Royal Havana Cigars. I'm going to. Red Barbecue loves Glen Roths. Amen. All right, all right. All right. Thank and, you. And you know what? That was the first introduction I had to Scotch, and when well, I that's heard, a good place to start. Yeah, when I had heard Scotch, I got really worried. I don't know. Like I thought of like old men and like I don't know. You know. And then I tried the Glen Roths, and I thought, Holy crap! I like Scotch. Who there knew? You go. And when I we so, did the Inch Gower, you really like that. So, hey, if any of you guys, uh, obviously, that have had my food and Derek's food, Rolling Smoke Barbecue, I appreciate the comment. Uh, let me know who you are. I appreciate you. Thank you. So Thank you me. were doing some smoking on Sunday? We were smoking a lot of cigars on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Did you smoke any meats? Oh, you want to know that? about that? So just, we did. Uh, why are you always asking Greg about yeah, his meat? Yeah, man? We, 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 I know. I just, I mean, well, I know. Hey, we Because I'm a fellow <laughs> smoker. We've smoked some good meat in our time. You're love Amen. Sure. Sure. I'm a, I'm a we did. Uh, we did. Smoker. We did uh, six briskets and we did six uh, six pork butts and then uh, we did side dishes. We did nice. uh, baked beans and uh, sweet corn and uh, coleslaw. coleslaw and that was uh, good. We what kind we of wood were you using? I use I so the first. Now you're asking about so his now wood. it's funny you ask that because <laughs> that's hard a kind. I that's a kind of what is he using? That, uh oh, you made him thirsty. So I just I just had my uh, so Scott Roy Blath gave me a smoker and it was over at Kyle's house. It's a whole different story. And I picked up the smoker because Kyle was like done with the smoker. He wanted to get rid of it, and he was re redoing their patio. And uh, I picked up the smoker like I don't know a, a year ago. And uh, I sent it over to a friend of mine who's a metal fabricator, and he revamped the smoker for me uh, per my you know, request of how I wanted it done. And uh, we used it for the first time uh, Sunday. And uh, it was unbelievable. I, I took 50 pieces of wood, I, threw, I brought home 35. So it doesn't eat smoke, it was fantastic. So we did, we did six briskets, we did six pork butts, and uh, we served instead of uh, buffet style. We 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 served tables, and uh, it was great. It was fantastic. The food was good. The smoker couldn't have worked any better. And I'm looking forward to using it again. And uh, so thank you, short bus. Thank you, short bus. And the right. type of wood again? I use. I'm sorry, that was your original question. I apologize. The first four hours I used all apple wood. There you go. The next four hours I used all cherry. That's what I use. And it melts it in your. The, I, I the first time. I mean, the first time in my smoker that you know I've had it several times. I wasn't sure what to expect because I didn't yeah. have it. I didn't have opportunity to pre-test the smoker, so we were running on 
running on hopeful and uh, the first piece of brisket that I pulled out it, along with about four or five other guys about the same time said the same thing. It, the, literally, the brisket melted in your mouth. Oh, it was I gotta unbelievable. Learn how to do a and, and then the pork, the pork was unbelievable. So, I mean, we had a great show. Uh, it was good. Um, you know, we had, we do a golf outing every year on Sunday, the last day of the event, the last day of the rolling event. So we rolled Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. What month was this? This was last weekend. Last okay, weekend. did my invite get lost in the mail? It sure did. It sure did. You didn't say you didn't say F you on the card? So um, I sent it to you. I probably, put, I probably didn't put the stamp on it. Scott's that invented that sport, matter. didn't they? So, <laughs> Golf. But um, so, so fresh rolled Cuban cigars. Uh, you know, they always send up the bundle of, of uh, tobacco and whole nine yards. It was a, it was a great, great time. And uh, the food was fantastic, if I don't say so myself. And nice. uh, we had a lot of help. And uh, God bless everybody that came out and uh, watched. And, uh, you know, Chuck and uh, Gary Coe and everybody that came out and, and gave us Kurt Eprick. Everybody came out and we, we did our Kurt. thing, man. It was, a, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I was trying to get out of there early. I mean, it's been, it was a long weekend for me. And I was ready. I, I packed Tom McMaster, Barb, they were there uh, helping out the whole nine yards. Mike LeBlanc, Alicia, his fiance, everybody was like hands on, da 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 da. It went through. It was so, so good. It couldn't have been any better. And I was ready to go by like 8 o'clock. I packed up everybody. We loaded the smoker. We did all that stuff. And we had uh, this guy, Bob, who uh, does Frank Sinatra. Who is he's fan really he's good. He's fantastic. So um, I just, all I had to do was load the wood and a couple of coolers. And Bob had moved his vehicle into my space. <laughs> and I was stuck there till 11 o'clock. <laughs> nice. Trying to get home till midnight. But anyway, it was worth every ounce. So I have, I have, I have to just say this, not, not to keep talking. I apologize. So Dave, when I turned 50, which was many years ago, uh, had bought me a box of Cohiba Bahanki cigars. And uh, at that time, they were $700, $700 cigars. a box. And that was my birthday gift. And I put them in my vault, as I call it, my, my obsolete yes. rare cigars. I put the whole box in the vault, along with my Sopranos and all that bullshit. And... Uh, before I left, Dave gave me a box of Cuban Cohiba Hanky cigars as a thank you on top of what he paid me. And uh, so. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And, and he says, but gee, I'm not going to lie to you. This is your box, but I'm not giving it to you until we open it. And everybody at the table. Because he knows you. Because he knows me. <laughs> so me, Dave, Jimmy Falb, Kurt Eprick. Chuck, uh, uh, he gave us everybody a cigar. Nice. And then he put them, put them in, packed them up, and he says, "Take it home, smoke them." And uh, I was uh, pleasantly nice. surprised. Plus, cool, dude. Uh, a couple of the guys that flew in from Cuba, cigar roller, and a couple of Dave's friends that he grew up with back in the day. Sí, they all, gusto. they all gave everybody gave me a different <laughs> Cohiba cigar Cohiba, go, from from Cuba. And uh, I packed all that. And you away. got a T-shirt too. I did get a T-shirt. I did get a t it said jackass on, but I still wear it. It's it okay. Matter. No, it was it was uh, 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 a Toro, uh, Dave's best friend, uh, got me a shirt that said champion on it. So it was cool. <laughs> nice. Dude, so. dude, I, you know I got a short, very short story. The, you know John Daly. Yeah. But well, for those of you who don't, man, he was an golfer. Australian guitar golfer. Uh, golfer. Yeah. yeah, not a guitar. Player. The golfer, <laughs> heavy set dude. John Daly. Like John Don Daly. John Daly. Do your worst. He said the shot time. guy. And they said it involved Tiger Woods, and Tiger was hitting at balls at the range. It was a true story, man. This is, I'm regurgitating something I heard from John, and he had been drinking at the clubhouse. You know, in the morning he got finished practicing a couple hours, whatever. So he starts drinking, and Tiger comes back in after hitting buckets of balls, like maybe three hours later, and he's with a bunch of friends. You know, John Daly. He likes to drink and party, man. It just reminds me of someone I know, okay? And <laughs> Tiger, he's like, Jay, Tiger, come on, have a drink with us, man. He says, no, 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 no. Um, I, I'm going to go, I'm going to go work out now. I got a match tomorrow. I was like, all right, whatever. Comes back, like, 
two and a half hours later after that, you know, at this point, they're like, Tiger, come on. Hey, it's good to see you, man. Come on, have a drink with us. We're all sitting in the bar. Everyone's here. He says, no, 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 no. I'm going to go home and rest up at an early match, 18 holes, you know. All right, so long story short, John Daly meets him on the golf course tomorrow and smokes him, man. So he, he, he shot a 65. Oh, my gosh. Because Scottish invented the sport, yeah. whatever. Yeah. And it's like, I think it's the only time he ever beat Tiger, but... After that round, that match, Tiger comes up to me. He's like, you know what, John? I think I'm going to start drinking now. <laughs> <laughs> so who's the most known uh, professional golfer? Most Jack known? Nichols. Jack Nichols. Yeah. Jack Nicholson? Nicholas? Jack Nicholson? Nick Nicholas. Jack Nicholas, not the actor. Okay. I always get them confused. Okay. Jack, yeah. Jack Nicholas. Nicholas. Jack yeah. Nicholas? Yeah. Okay, so you're all going to laugh at me. You probably won't believe Nicholas. this. Nicholas. Okay. Yeah. So I met his you son think today. You think of Phil Nicholson? You There's met like, his son right. today. Yeah, Nicholas. Jack yeah. Nicholas. Yeah, Jack. Yeah, yeah. Did you, you hear, hear this? Guest. Whatever. Yeah, I want to hear it. Go. Listen. And then we're going to start talking about whiskey after this. Okay. Yeah. Jack. Jack Nichols. Nicholas. You're going to be Jack there all Nichols. night, man. Okay. So true story. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid. Honest to God, no bullshit. Not, I'm being totally <laughs> short. Serious. I met his son today. Today. Hmm? Where at? Small. On the golf course. I met him today. We took a we took a, a stand up humidor over to a, a, a sports bar, if you will. Fantastic place. Food's good. Where at? Uh, this was in Willoughby, and when they did they, they do bocce ball matches and all that stuff. You were there. Um, well, I won't get into that. I'll get into that later. But um, I met his son today, and very he's cool. a very nice guy. And he is a uh, he has a concrete. Company and he is very successful. And he's not even Italian. He has a concrete he, company. Right. I can't believe it either. But seriously, all kidding aside, great guy, great guy, very charismatic, very professional. Just a really, really nice guy. So he lives in the area, or he, he li- just happened he, to be visiting. He lives in Willoughby. Nice. Wow. Very yeah. cool. So, yeah. Very cool. Well, that's that's, that's great. Nice. Small world. Right. Did you have anything on our whiskey tonight? <laughs> Are we drinking whiskey tonight? What? We're drinking whiskey. Yeah, we're whiskey. trying to talk what? about Glen Rose. Maker's right. Cut. Let's do it. Yeah, I, 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 I can cut to some whiskey, so let me see. Do we have a commercial? Uh, we have a commercial. Why? You need to go... I think we should do a commercial first. I think we need to do a commercial. Okay. All right, All right kids, we'll be right back. Okay. So uh, we'll be right back after these messages. Nice. Is that... Hi, it's the gang from the Whiskey Roundtable here. We're not here to talk about whiskey. We're here to talk about cigars, Royal Havana Cigars. Royal Havana Cigars is located at 38448 Lakeshore Boulevard in Willoughby, Ohio. That's 38448 Lakeshore Boulevard in Willoughby, Ohio. Royal Havana Cigar Lounge is tailored to an old 50s, 60s Cuban theme with a friendly atmosphere. Their walk-in humidor is filled with top cigar brands. Trust us, you're bound to find the cigar you're looking for. Royal Havana's friendly atmosphere and comfortable accommodations gives you the opportunity to relax in one of their fine chairs and enjoy a fine cigar. Try one of their house brand cigars. Royal Havana house brand cigars are rolled fresh every week, not to mention the price is right. What else does Royal Havana offer, you ask? Let us tell you. Check out Royal Havana's large inventory of lighters, cutters, butane, lockers for rent, ashtrays, rocks glasses, and... And hey, ladies, Royal Havana has gift cards and a clothing boutique. And while you're there, check out the humidor for the fine line of cigars tailored to a woman's taste. That's right, we said it. They have cigars that are specially designed for a woman's enjoyment. Visit Royal Havana Cigars at gmail.com for all of Royal Havana's up-and-coming cigar events. They also host public and private events like weddings, family get-togethers, golf outings, wine tastings, just to name a few. So next time you're in the area, stop in at Royal Havana Cigars and see owner Dave Somrock and mention the name Big G from the Whiskey Roundtable, and you'll receive 10% off your first cigar purchase. Listen... We know what some of you are thinking. You can get a cigar anywhere. But hey, at Royal Havana, you can only get a good cigar. That's Royal Havana Cigars, 
located at 38448 Lakeshore Boulevard in Willoughby, Ohio, and tell them Big G from the Whiskey Roundtable sent you. We're back, but um, Greg obviously needed a little more time in the restroom. <laughs> Here he comes. <laughs> I told him, hurry up and shake it off, and let's go. What are you here? We've got a great party here tonight. <laughs> I just want to blot around. I knew I shouldn't eat that last chicken wing. <laughs> Kidding. All right. <laughs> Kidding. 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 We left the worm back in the van. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, thank you for bearing with us tonight. So, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Glenn Ross. So, the story of Glenn Ross begins with two men because it couldn't have happened without them. James Stewart, he had the vision. To oh, I thought you were going to say it's Glenn and Ross. Oh, yeah. Well, well, hey, there you go. That would have been cool, but yeah. no. 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 Okay. Uh, so James Stewart had the vision to build the distillery in Ross, which is actually a town yeah. in Scotland. Ross. Yeah. And he at, grew up there. Um, and then the other one, that the other man that we're referring to is Reverend William Sharp. <clears throat> so, you know, we always laugh about the Irish uh, priests that like to right. drink their oh, whiskey and yes. stuff. But here's a Scottish guy that kind of got involved. So, as I said, James Stewart was born in the town of Ross. And he had a passion for whiskey. And he wanted to build a distillery that would be um, able to make a lighter, fruitier spirit than some of the counterparts out there in Scotland. And he teamed up with a couple of guys, Robert Dick and William Grant, to build the distillery. And they started building it in an old mill. But then in the summer of 1878, a financial crisis hit the country, and they couldn't afford to finance the distillery anymore. So that's when Reverend William Sharp came into the picture. He was a priest in a nearby church, in a town called Archie's Town. And although he preached against temptation, don't fall into that, uh, he was devoted to the community. And he knew that Speyside Whiskey was the backbone of the community and it would keep the community going. So when he heard there were problems building the distillery, he decided to step in. And he was able to persuade some of the local leaders of the community to raise at the time, so this was 1878, 600 pounds. So this is this is a priest. So this is this, a yes, Catholic he, priest in Scotland. Bobby, actually, I think he's Bobby Presbyterian. Yeah, listening? Presbyterian. That makes more sense to me. I, I have okay. a priest joke. Can I tell it at the end of the show? <laughs> at the end. Oh, of the show. Dear, okay. I don't know. You okay. scare me. Anyway, he, ra he was able to reach out to the leaders in the community, raise 600 pounds, which was enough to get the distillery finished. And then in December of 1879, they started, the first flow of the spirit started running. So there's a, a mill stream was built to divert some of the burn, which the burn is a... Stream. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> to turn the water from the stream into a water wheel that provided... <laughs> the distillery with all the power it needed right. so what i want to do is kind of just show you a quick picture of the distillery nice all right so here you'll see a distillery uh, a picture of the distillery so the site is split in two and the burn of roths which is the stream thank you doug mm -hmm. uh runs right through it so on one side they have production uh, this is exclusively selected malt arrives on this site to be screened and weighed before milling. Then fresh spring water from the estate is added to the grist to start the mashing process and wash before being transferred to the copper stills. Then on the other side of the burn, the new make spirit is transferred to the filling store and reduced by the water source ready to be filled to cask. So that's right beside the warehouses, which slowly mature the Glen Ross whiskey to perfect age. Beyond the warehouse on the right, <laughs> hidden away, you'll see the cooperage. You want to see the picture? Is that no, 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 no. I'm just wondering, what, the, what is the grist? What the hell is that? That's the 
uh, What's the grist? Wants you grind, <laughs> wants you grind the uh, fart. Oh, it's a grist. <laughs> I love how he just does yeah, this thing. A grist it's... breeze enters the room. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, behind the warehouses, let's see. Let's make sure I'm still on the picture. <laughs> Come on. Uh, behind the warehouses on the right of the picture, hidden away, you'll find the cooperage and the cask store. Okay. So that's, uh, I, I love this picture. It kind of gives yeah. you a 360 view. That's cool. It's like a little the, town. Yeah, the river, cool. the, the stream running right, right through right. so you can see how it's divided. We'll see if you remember from last week. So where is Speyside? If you look at Scotland. North. North. Right. Well, northeast? Northeast. Okay, okay northeast. Thank you. Yeah, ah! right, very good. Well, you think it was so a suit oh, for nothing? It's kind of in the Highlands, but it, <laughs> do you think we don't listen to you? I, get I like to give you guys quizzes, friends. which will be another show. We'll do one of those quiz shows again sooner or later. It was a good whiskey. But, good whiskey but yeah, whiskey, I think way. that's great. So, yeah, it's a nice Speyside. It's a classic Speyside whiskey. Um, it, I would say it's not. It's in the middle. It's definitely not a light one of the light whiskeys. Like we've tried Inchgower, even Glenlivet. Right. It, it's it's always got a little more body to it. We, um, we drank that. Inch grower yeah. a couple nights. Yes, we yeah. did. That was great stuff. And sure. it's a uh, little, you know. It's a little aphrodisiac. It's, it, it, it's on that kind of what I'll call mid-range uh, space side. So, uh, but it's a right in the middle as far as space side character. So let's give it a try on the taste. You ready to pass that drink around? All right. Roll through. Just to be clear, this is not the inch grower. This is no. This is the Glen Ross yes. Makers. Right. Glen Ross. And Ross. Glen Ross Makers. Cut. Makers, Makers oh my cut. lord! So satisfying. All right. Oh, so, so Cameron said this is one of his favorite whiskeys. Ah, oh, I, I Cameron. Think, did I get it for Cameron? I think I got it to. Uh, that was part of one of his Christmas presents. Well, it was one of his Christmas presents. It wasn't part of one, but. Oh my lord, Friday's for the boys Ooh. and Karen. This is now amazing. I've had, I have to be honest, I've had a good amount of this. I bought, you know, I've had a bottle myself. And it's delightful. Just bought another one, but well, I'm going to take a stab at going at this fresh. And I will tell you, for a scotch, the color is the absolutely beautiful. amazing. Yeah, it's dark, for sure. That's because of the, you know, the cherry finish. Finishing, ah, right? Okay. Which again is common with a lot of space side whiskeys. They do the the um, finishing in X Sherry, um, Madeira, other other types of wines. Uh, Cameron sent you at a Christmas present. Well, um, hmm? we'll we'll we used to come through on that. <laughs> Here's a nice ad. Tell us about your birthday present. <laughs> Here's a nice adjective for the good old days, man. It's got a nice oily. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> it, does. it is. It like I agree. Thick, I agree. very oily. Yeah, now, it does I get, look at it on the glass. I get though. definitely, I get some, like, berries off of this. I get a lot I, of fruit out of it. And cherry, that's probably from the sherry. I get, mm-hmm. I, but I also get some banana, which is unique for me as a, as a flavor profile on a Scottish whiskey. I don't know I, if I any know, of you get that. With, I would go with some banana. Being yeah, the connoisseurs yeah. you two are, you three perhaps, um, is it is yeah. it a sherry, sherry casks? Is this aged in those types of casks? So they'll, it's, it, it would spend, it, it spent most of its life in a ex-bourbon cask, and then they'll transfer that to a sherry butt and That's then allege it for another couple what of it years. Sounds like Whose butt? Yeah. It was a Sherry. News- Sherry's butt. Yeah. Sherry? Yeah. Damn, Put Sherry. Put it in Sherry's yeah, butt. Age it for a couple more years. Hey, 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 Sherry. <laughs> We're a very high class show. <laughs> <clears throat> but, uh, and interestingly, I get a little bit of. This is one where I can go to something that's not a typical food item, but it has a little bit of a leather. I get a little it leather. It does have a leather rubber, smell. Rubber, rubber leather. leather. I don't get it. Not, Some of that not stuff. leather, but. Yeah, it's not quite that strong, right? Right. So I get a little leather on the on the nose. So you want me to read the the nose that I pulled? All right. Off? Yeah. Yeah. See what nose you got. So the nose uh, pile of raisins sit with spent coffee grounds. See, that's mm. what I'm. Giving. I didn't. It's I don't get the coffee grounds. I get the no, raisin. It's interesting. I don't either. Sub texture. Because that either. coffee grounds to me is kind of bitter. I'm not getting any. Right. Sugared plums. Well, I said my fruit. The red there the fruit are joined by strawberry. Bootleg sweet. 
So that's Maybe. like uh, that, you know, that licorice Maybe. that comes in. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, that's what they're saying. But I don't get that. I get I, maybe I, don't either. I, don't I either. get more of the banana than I would I do. Something that right. I would say is like a. I'm with you. It says woodiness is integrated with a stem ginger. Ah, uh, okay. I, I I would go with ginger. Lacquered with tanned leather. Ah, oh, there he is. There he is. I don't get and the leather. I, I would. I can go with a little bit of fresh ginger <sighs> in there. I don't know, but you guys, I can't wait. Yeah, let's try the I taste. I hope that Palace Let's go in for the, the taste. The I gotta finish. dip in. I, I the well, All the Glen Ross are my favorite. The good stuff. Really? Yes. Really. I mean, we've done the other Glens tonight just hanging out, you know, and I brought some Glen Fittich, which is just, a, again, we're comparing Ford versus Ferrari over here. Right. But, yeah. Let's give it a taste. Happy to be here. I again. get the raisin. Actually, it's probably Razor more sharing. prominent raisin than anything. Yeah, I agree. <sighs> All right. Going in? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm late late to the party. So I would say on the palate I, I mm. definitely get some more things like um, that I didn't get on the nose. I get some orange peel. Um, maybe Oh my god. Instead of ginger, I would say almost like a gingerbread and I get uh, some more fruit and that's what I'm getting. A little peppery. It kind of. I, I get the pepper. I get. I get the aftertaste uh, at the end. I. I would have to say orange fruit as well. Yeah. On the nose, I get a ton. Of, I. I did get a ton of raisin out of it. But mm-hmm. the feel was is there's a spice, a good and a hot, it it is. a, a yeah, touch of heat towards the end. But it's so I, it's it's there and gone. Now I'm definitely now, on the finish, um, in the back of my tongue, I'm getting like a cocoa. Oh. It's so Almost like a yeah, cocoa. It's very, very warm. Like it's yeah. uh, it's just delicious, man. Yeah, that's a nice. Still is a nice whiskey. Just like the last time There's I There's a it. lot going on here. <laughs> this is one of the things. But um, it's always nice to, uh, even if you've had something and you know you like it, it's always good to kind of give it the more um, in depth kind of a taste. I'll, taste. I'll shut I'm, up because I'm, a more, I'm more of a whiskey bourbon guy. Go ahead. And, but. This is just another ball game, man. I mean, there's something about the scotches that you know, there's a lot going on in here. Uh, on the uh, yeah. on the on the second hit that I did, um, I got that quick, uh, very very surprising, gentle uh, peep. Did I, you? I didn't get it the first time. The second time, they they may they here. My guess is uh, it, it wasn't anything we read. I, they're probably taking a fraction. They're getting a fraction of their malt from their supplier that's been peated. Okay, I, I get and a they subtle. S- they decide, well, we're going to put in ten percent of that. Right. They, they, that's how most distilleries. Um, but it's not smoky. It's not like that. No, smoke but it's, you, it's pleasing. As I said, they it's probably just pleasing. put a little bit in there because it is Scottish whiskey. It's more of an earthy taste yeah. versus yeah. a peaty taste. Sure, no, it, and you're exactly right. But I, I did, I did get on the second try. Um, I did get a, a quick, subtle peat out of it, and it was very pleasing to me. Yeah, but the leather that I got on the nose, I, mm. I don't, obviously don't taste any of that. But um, Yeah, I don't get that on the taste which either. Which is probably a good thing. Nice. So as far as the taste, a couple of things you guys had said that uh, they had called out in the taste are orange peel. I did. Um, let's see. You also called out some pepper. Mm-hmm. There's some pepper, definitely. Citrus. You said citrus, yeah. 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 Orange peel. Yeah. Orange yeah. Peel. So some of the other things that they ha- they mentioned are salted peanuts, mm. tobacco leaf. That's a stretch. I can get the tobacco. I do get some. I would can go with some kind of nutty. Probably because I'm strong. No, nutty tones. Oh, I don't want to go. Scotch is not so hard. I don't. No, so not well. not skins. But. <laughs> That's Jennifer. Oh thing. my. <laughs> No. Yeah, Jennifer. No nut skins, but no oh, shit. Okay. And they also mentioned some stone fruit, like apricots and peaches. Didn't get any of that. I don't get any of that either. No. I mean, I said fruity out of the gate. Cherry, cherry, right. and some. Yeah. It's because those some all the scotches, Scotland guys are mixing their beers with the scotch. So they're getting all that flavor mixed up. That's what's know. happening. I do get the cocoa though. Scotch and a really pint. Get yeah, they're on the back, on the back of the tongue. It's late, late in the, kind of right in the finish. You get some, um, 
some baking cocoa. You're just making stuff up now. I don't now. get it. <laughs> baking <laughs> cocoa? Baking. Well, it's baking. not all... I like guess because it's not... Baking. 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 Oh, In other words, okay. it's not really a sweet. It's that kind I don't of get, I don't bitter get the cocoa. cocoa. I don't get the cocoa. I do. I don't get it. It's very... So you're a no-go on the cocoa? I don't, I don't get that. I don't get it. You I know mean, everybody's pals. Different. Greg and yeah, I have I a mutual know. ancestor from our great, 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 great ancestor. His name was De Pepe de Coco. De Pepe de Coco. Oh my goodness. Dear Lord. This is why we okay, love Okay, Big G. Hey, G. I'm, I'm very interested now. I'm, I'm, i got to hear the score. I want to hear the score. Oh, we got a score. So, oh, Albert, yeah. uh, can, can we give Albert a little intro into how we score? So, oh, yeah, Albert. Um, I assume he'd been watching, but um, just to make sure, one, uh, it's I'm a, a lawyer for it's sure. It's a one to five, <laughs> with five being the best damn thing you've ever had in your life. So that's kind of our our system. Pretty okay. Simple. Okay. And decimals, however many decimal places you want to have. I already have a number within nine. reason. We try to keep it to no more than four decimal places. There you go. Because we're all about accuracy. I'm a tough critic, just so we're all aware. I want you to know. It's one to five. I want to. I want you to know how well I think of this drink. This is a great drink, but I am a tough critic. Yeah, and um, Mm -hmm. we don't uh, we don't put too many conditions on it. No, uh, no, no. Because Karen is more. uh, Well, I'm I'm the main guy that puts uh, single malts as my first choice. So we might score a little bit differently when it comes to the different. Types of whiskey, but Big G, what do you got? I like it. It's a great product. Um, I'm gonna go with three seven. <gasps> three? No, you didn't dip into the threes. Did three, you seven, really? Seven, three, yeah. seven. And I just again. I've had a, I've had a lot of their products. Um, age statement or year statements, if you will. I have a, a whole bunch. Um, and so you're gonna kind of like. Figure where you'd have to place it given Correct. the other ones that Correct. you've had. I mean, we have eighteen-year-old. We have all. Kind yeah, of, yeah. Um, it's it's. In my opinion, it drinks more like a bourbon. Um, mm-hmm. I did not get a lot of the stuff that you guys got, but I got a majority of it. I get it. Um, I like it. Um, I I definitely would drink it. No doubt about it. But I'm just going to stick with the three seven, man. Okay. Nice. That's where I'm at. All right. Karen. You guys, you know how tough I am. I know. Especially on single ball. 4.5. Oh! Holy shit. Nice. Okay. It's amazing. Dougie? Just totally where you at, amazing. Where you at, Dougie? Okay. I'm, again, I'm a single ball guy, so I have to put this in my whole spectrum. So um, I'm going to say a 3.9. <laughs> my man, dude. Oh, my you man. guys are rough. Again, am I up? I am I up? I might as well because I gave it a 3.925. That's (laughs) 3.925 thousandths for those of you uh, grammatically inclined. 3.925. So so you know we don't round them. Very good. Dude, it's up there, there, man. No, that's a... Four out of five stars right here, man. I I love that that Karen really likes this. I mean, and I expect that she would just knowing what I know that... um, because you like, you don't like the PD profiles no. or the smoky, and no. this has maybe, as we talked about, maybe a hint of the, of, of some peat in there. But it's it's a typical, right in the middle space side. It has a little bit of punch, and it's got the fruit, and it's got the vanilla. You know, the it's kind got the, of the I get the cocoa too. The and it, cocoa. It's just there's a lot got some, for a scotch. There's so much going on. Yeah. Let me and ask yeah. you something because you're a professional. Like honestly, I, I'm you're not. I don't know as much as you. <laughs> Doug is very bullshit. Seriously, oh. both of you guys. Doug is Doug is very is, diverse in scotch. Is a space side more peaty, generally speaking, or is it more mellow, like more drinkable, approachable? Like, then, just, uh, it's in the drinkable, then, uh, approachable like, side of. Things the south side of. You know, I think it's, I personally think space side's more of a lighter. It's not peaty. Yeah. It's, it's not smoky. smoky. It's okay. not this. It's okay. not so. I, I'm just it, to me in terms of uh, we'll call it the, starting at the lightest. Right. You typically your lowlands. Right. Then yeah, space side would be the Scotland, mid. South. Yeah. The mid. And then the the middle is. Right. I mean, the next level up would be space sides. Mm-hmm. The island. They're. They not much peat, they're but they're a little bit more uh, rich, if you will. Right. 
Um, I do know this. I would say the Highlands, seven different, Campbelltown, seven different then Isla in terms Highlands, of right. Isla is off the charts. Lowlands, like, so heavy pea, smoke smoky, peak, so. which is what my favorite. And in every are. region, though, it tastes different. It's distilled like there's well, that's different. What he's saying. That's yeah. exactly that's what, what he just said. Yeah, it's Maybe very intriguing. Exactly. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, and um, I, I like it. I mean, um, you know, me and you are always recently close to when it comes to scotches. We're we're close to. Uh, uh, our points close, you know, close and in, in, in maybe a point off or two, but um, it's it's very enjoyable. Yeah, but not a thousand slough. So Cameron five. and Lauren, I'm just wondering if you're <laughs> having some Aran tonight. So. What's Aran? It's a, it's a single malt that uh, Cameron got for his birthday. I'm still learning. Go ahead, hey, I'm next time I come over, I'll bring my guyometer and we'll measure it. <laughs> this time you come over, we'll be drinking a rye or. <laughs> <laughs> An Irish whiskey or something. All I, all I know is that do. Steve agrees with my rating. Thank you, Steve. It's right. probably the first and only time we'll what ever did you agree. Say? And uh, your 4. friend, <laughs> one of your friends, uh, is he watching? Really, really, had the, really? the Glen Roth's 19. Robert DeGazio. Robert if is you are. watching. Yeah, Robert? Robert. That, I now, I he's he was not going to be able to call in. He's, uh, he's out right. in but California, that, and okay. he's running around. But so. that okay. 94, right, Robert, we love you, That's a famous, famous... Glenn Roth. So, um, so for those of you just tuning in, I don't know if you can see it, if you can see it without the light and stuff. And no. I didn't even pull ask if, gee, do you have pull that bottle? Pull it back a pull, little. Just pick up the bottle. Take the bottle out of there. No, no, this is a Glenn Roth 94. Try the other camera because that's got and a it's, it's big. A, yeah, it's all ble- it's all bleached Here, let me, out. Let me, let me, let me all we can see is uh, red the, uh, black plaque. What do you What do you want? Ninety <laughs> five. Are you doing 95? This is a It's Glenn. a 94. That's a, that's one of the... Put your stuff. hand over the top of your phone. <laughs> no, over a little bit more. Turn the brightness up on the phone? No, it's no, just the it's ring so on the though. camera. Is... Anyway, 1994. Glenn that's right. Don't that's worry one about of the classic great... That's a great whiskey. Is that the 94 so, or the 95? Here's the interesting 90. thing. It's a green label 1994, and it's got a little... This is what intrigued Doug and I. Was there? He Robert DeGazio chimed in with a sticker that says San Francisco Gold Spirits Competition 2010 Gold Medal. So, so this is this is probably a five hundred dollar bottle. If he knows the the current he's retail drinking. price, he's, he's right the free. If he knows the current retail price for that, tell him to, to let us know. Thanks, I'm Rob. guessing it's a pretty dear dram. Okay, uh, it's a right. time for the. Are we? We got another. Um, so to? yeah, we've we've got some back and forth on oh, here. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just I'm responding. Yes. Well. So what Steve noted, which I think is true, is that some of the flavors in this whiskey will be overpowered by the cigars you're smoking. Say that so again. Some of the flavors in this whiskey, mm-hmm. I think the cigars that you're smoking may impact. impact. Which is of course why I never smoke during the. That's right, Doug. Amen. Amen. No, you never smoke. No, he goes, as far as you never know. smoke. Uh, Lauren you. says the Aaron <laughs> is excellent. A- I don't know if I'm uh, saying it right. Yes. A R R A N. Aran, yes. Aran is excellent. Uh, Degazio said if you like pear, Lagavulin. Okay. Oh. Pear, like the flavor? Pear flavor? Pear. If you like pear, he Lagavulin. says Lagavulin. Okay. Uh, Lauren right, well. is very jelly of what we're drinking. <laughs> I would be too after tasting it. Is it well, <laughs> now, freaking amazing? But, but Cameron yeah. did get a bottle for Christmas, if I remember correctly. So if not, you're yeah. not getting one next year. That's yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Amen. Okay. Amen. Is All it right. time for? Uh, should we go to the wiz- wizard? Should we go so, to the yeah. wizard? We need to do the wizard. wizard. So we need to. Do- or we're gonna have another hour and a half show. Going. Yeah, let's oh, gosh, yeah, we're already okay, at that let's time. Move on. Let's move on. <laughs> All right, you guys, we will be right back. A few words from the Whiskey Wizard on malting. Yes, we'll see you in a, in a little bit. Hang tight. Be right back, kids. Whiskey Wizard! It's the Whiskey Wizard! Hello and welcome to the Whiskey Wizard, where we say that whiskey making takes scientific knowledge 
an artisan's skill and dedication, and a bit of the wizard's alchemy of light, air, earth, and fire. Last time we discussed the types of Scotch whiskies and the various single malt Scotch whiskey regions. This time I want to continue down the Scottish whiskey road by talking more specifically about the process of malting. After all, Scottish whiskey is quite predominantly a malt whiskey. Barley malt is of course the fundamental ingredient of Scottish and single malt whiskey production. Once the barley grain is harvested from the fields, it isn't ready to be processed into whiskey just yet. The starch contained in the barley grain must first be converted into sugars before yeast can be used to start the mash fermentation. This process of beginning the conversion of barley starch into simpler sugars is called malting. Barley that has undergone this process is called malt or malted barley. Grains like corn and rye used in American whiskies do not require malting, but typically need malted barley in the mash to add enough diastolic power to help convert their starches to sugars during the mash process. Wheat can be used unmalted or can be malted for flavor preference. Some Irish whiskies use unmalted or green barley as a portion of the mash, along with malted barley, to help blend fresh flavor elements to its softer taste profile. Sometimes enzymes are added to further convert the unmalted grain. Anyway, although barley malt production always includes steeping, germination, and drying, there are two production methods currently being used. The majority of malt is created these days using drum malting, made on an industrial scale by a malt supplier to the specifications of their customer distilleries. Up until 100 years ago, the distilleries only used malting floors to let their barley germinate into malt. The first automation step was the Saladin box, which automated the germination of the barley but didn't bring any advantages for malt drying. Today, the industry uses drum dryers as well. Only a few distilleries have their own small maltings. Although they're regarded with reverence and viewed as particularly authentic, the malt from these maltings costs the distilleries a lot more than industrially produced malt of the same or better quality wood. Today, barley is grown in many countries in the world's temperate zones. For a long time now, the Scottish barley production hasn't been able to keep up with the demand. Thus, Scotland imports the balance of its barley and barley malt from countries such as Germany. For producing barley malt, the barley grain is put in an ideal warm and damp environment in order to make it germinate. Then the grain activates what is essentially the solar energy it has saved up while out growing in the field and converts its starch into sugar. The barley grain is like a small factory that wants to then convert the sugar into cellulose in order to produce roots and to start the growth process. However, with malting, after the starch is converted into sugar, the process is interrupted. The malt is dried and the malt sugar or maltose is abundant and ready for fermentation. Next, the malt is ground coarsely, then dissolved with hot water, and eventually left to ferment by adding yeast to the mash. After that, as we've discussed in the past, it's time for distillation. Today, barley or malt is transported to the distilleries by fully loaded 40-ton trucks. Today, only a handful of distilleries do their own malting. And apart from Spayburn and Glen Ord, who utilize drum maltings, these distilleries only produce parts of the malt that they need, mostly for nostalgic or touristic reasons. It's difficult, requiring a lot of experience, to create and sustain an ideal climate for barley to develop and germinate if you only have a simple malting floor. As soon as the weather outside changes, the temperature or the air humidity aren't in the optimal range anymore, and the weather changes quite frequently in Scotland. Mold growth and bacteria or fungi can grow on the malt floor. Furthermore, mice and rats always require diligence to control. 
Still, single malt whiskey is a very traditional product and should remain so. Strong increases in demand for malt whiskeys has led most of the distilleries to switch to a three shift production seven days a week. The production is only halted for a few days a year for necessary maintenance. So today's distilleries that have their own maltings can only produce a part of the malt in the classic way, but still it's a worthy and beautiful tribute to an old tradition. But most is arriving via truck and before a truckload of barley can be put into the silos, the distillery must take a sample and evaluate its quality. Only if the barley meets certain quality criteria, such as density, humidity, starch content, uh, will the distillery's controller accept it. The whole batch of barley is pumped into the silos via compressed air for storage. Raw grain is very hard. That's why the grain must be steeped in water for several days before germination. During this time, they soak with water, which they need to trigger the germination process. Steeping takes two to three days. Of course, the same pure spring water is used as is used for extracting the sugar. After the barley has been steeped, the malting begins. With traditional malting, simple tools such as wheelbarrows and rakes are used. The moist barley is spread on the malting floor in a layer about six to eight inches deep. The malting floors must be aired properly to discourage the growth of fungi and bacteria. The barley must be turned over regularly since the biological reaction of germination releases heat. The malt man makes sure that the barley doesn't get too hot by turning it over and over. Stirring and airing are now mostly done by mechanical equipment. And last is the drying process. When the malt bursts open and its roots start to form with the germ, the germination process is stopped since this uses up the sugar from the malt, which will then not be available for fermentation. Germination is stopped by heating and drying the malt. Heating the malt up to more than 70 degrees centigrade destroys the germination enzymes or amylases and drying stops mildew and bacteria from affecting the fresh malt. The still slightly wet malt is spread on a perforated drying floor above a kiln. The floor is often made from a steel wire grid with holes that are smaller than the grains. The hot exhaust air from the kiln fire is led through the malt layer and thereby extracts humidity, which escapes through the pagoda-shaped chimneys. If peat is added to the kiln fire, pungent smoke develops, which provides for the smoky flavor in some Scottish malt whiskies. The degree of smokiness in malt whiskies depends on how long the malt was dried over the peat fire and or normal fire. We'll talk more about that next time. After drying, the malt can be kept for several weeks before it is coarsely ground in the malt mill so the sugar can be extracted with hot water during the mash. So next time we'll dig into stuff that makes, at least for me, Scottish whiskey most Scottish. And that of course is the peat. Oh, for Pete's sake. That's it for this edition. This is Douglas Dunbar, the Whiskey Wizard for the Whiskey Roundtable. Slan Java. And now, back to the live show. Oh, for Pete's sake. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, <laughs> I probably should have saved that for next week because that's when we're talking about Pete. But anyway, here we go. <clears throat> No, I like it. I, yeah. li I like that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, malt kind of piqued my interest because there's malt in beer. Yeah, well, it's kind malted barley. Interest. Same it thing as used in beer as it is in single malt whiskey. There we go. In fact, you know, the first step of making a single malt whiskey is to essentially you make beer, uh, malted barley, and then you add the yeast, but you just don't put any hops in there. Ah, those. Yeah, yeah. probably if you put hops in and then try to make a whiskey. 
Although, I don't know. Is anybody going to try to do that? I don't know. But I probably don't not know. a good idea. I don't know. But while we were away, I had Greg pour me another one. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a 4.5 for you, so. That's amazing. Still yeah. good. It is good. It's really, really good. It is a really good whiskey. I, you know, I was almost tempted to say, you know, can I change my score? But, uh, oh, Steve Williams wants to know how the Indians are doing tonight, and he oh. said, "Way to go, Whiskey Wizard! It was a great episode." Oh, thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. So now you got my interest peaked. Oh, they are not doing well. They're down what? in the fourth inning. They're down seven to five against the. Tigers. 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 We've beat them 10, 20 straight games, I think. Come on, Joe Boo. Give mm. Joe Boo some Jeez, I, I think I need to talk to Scott, actually. 20 <laughs> straight <laughs> games for good seeks. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay even said, for Pete's sake. <laughs> oh, uh, Lauren says, beer is just whiskey that isn't done yet. <laughs> uh, kind of true. true. Yeah, I guess so, if you look at it that way. Too funny. So, got a little news. So, well, we had uh, somebody made a comment that Lagavulin yeah. t- tastes like pear, and we were a little confused by that. But they meant to say peat. Damn spell check. There you go. There you go. So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Lagavulin is one of the the heaviest, peatiest, smokiest whiskeys out there. Amen. It, it tastes like. Uh, your your uh, tastes like a, you're on a it's a campfire on by the ocean on on the cliff. That's kind of what it, what always reminds me of. So. Okay. Amen. Okay. So anyway. Yeah. No. Good call out because we want to make sure we corrected correct, that because yeah. it's totally different. A little confused. Pear. Well, I, maybe it's in there. Um, yeah. But that's what I like about those islas. Just to digress for a minute is that even though they're peaty and they're smoky. I, for me, I can still catch all those subtle other flavors, the, the vanilla tones, the caramel, the fruity tones, all that stuff. It seems like it, it allows that stuff to still come through in the finish. So anyway, that's why I love them so much. We'll get to that next time because we're going to talk about Pete. Mm. Cool. Who's Pete? Pete who? Um, we couldn't make it today. Pete Rose? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm back on I'm baseball. Back baseball. Right. I'm kidding. What's the uh, glass yeah. you're drinking out of there, uh, Albert? Alberto. What's that glass? Uh, it's us BBN, though. <laughs> Dougie and the chicos was about to go. But. No se puede conseguir más que lo que se puede pagar. Oh, bueno, es loco. Your penis is loco, <laughs> what? Uh, no, I want to apologize to my girlfriend out there. She's probably crying right now. <laughs> <laughs> now we know why she didn't show up. Now, tonight. which day? <laughs> so she knows what Poor I Judith. Said. We love her. Uh, she's a but girl. just to reel back in, you know, I'm glad you asked because to pontificate where I left off earlier in the show about playing and teaching piano at the Family Learning Center for Music, it's located in Twinsburg, Ohio, directly next to Anthony's Men's Barber Shop. This is a great place for any of those of you listening. Amen. Great place. I agree. Um, Why don't you Anthony's take that Barber. Let me show you. Camera. Anthony gifted this to me. Um, brand new scotch glass, scotch, you know, rocks glass for whiskey, bourbon, any drink mm, you're choosing. I can't see the. Uh, but no. We well, see it, but you can't. It's oh, kind of blurry. Change the angle. Oh, so it's got the barbershop pull. I see. Oh, okay. there we go. All right, pull it back, pull it back, pull it back, pull it back. So go ahead. What's what's on the glass? What's it say? At any rate, this was Anthony's Men's Barber. Okay. Men's Anthony's Swan. Men's Barber. Yeah, and right. it's located in Twinsburg, Ohio, and uh, <clears throat> if it wasn't for him, I, I never would have gotten this gig, man. It's hard for musicians right now during the COVID epidemic and uh, everyone not being able to play live music. So what he did was organize a jam session outdoors with masks, of course, and I played in front of, un- unbeknownst to me, a, a, a guy named Vince who owns this music shop right next door to Anthony's Barbershop. In Twinsburg, it's the Family Learning Center for so Music. Anthony, he has a place in Bing. He plays Church. drums, but his main, yeah. pa- you know, his main thing is like this barber. He's got a place in Twinsburg and here in Chagrin Falls, Ohio. That's how we all, the three of us, when we we started out on the show many many ages ago. You know, we knew Anthony back then. Sure. Um, mm-hmm. And Absolutely. hopefully, he joins us one day on the show. And talks be awesome. Right. Yeah. His wife Holly, they're excellent. Good people. guy. Good guy, for sure. All right. So, thank you. You're welcome. 
So, yeah. gee, we got some news? I do. So, Maker's Mark. Oh, I just sorry. have a question. So, do they sell those glasses at the shop? They do. I'm not sure the price. I was oh, gifted this okay. glass because he knew I was coming on the show okay. this evening. And Hope he's watching. Hopefully he's so watching just that. mention Albert and you'll get a free glass. No, <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's the case. The whole case is six. Just playing. All right. <laughs> All right, kids. Maker's Mark has announced the launch of the Wood Finishing Series 2020 limited release, the brand's first ever blend of bourbons. The, uh, the Loretto Distillery launched their Wood Finishing Series last year with Stave Profile RC6. I'm not sure what that means. RC6? RC6. Okay. Highlighting the rich fruit flavors no, in their famous weeded bourbon. Uh, for the wood finishing series of 2020 uh, release, Jane Bowie, director of innovation at Maker's Mark, Aww. tells us the distillery sent out uh, to show show off the caramels and vanillas. Although it took them, uh, sorry kids, took them many many more tries than expected, as this year's official stave profile, same of S E R X. PRS didn't exactly roll off the uh, tongue. The distillery uh, will move forward uh, naming each annual series release of the year. So I'm going to go back to hold that thought. So, I'm holding it. All right. So I just picked up uh, four or five different uh, Maker's Mark products that have all kinds of different flavors. Milkshake and honeysuckle. Cocoa, honeysuckle and all this stuff, which I have here. Uh, in the thing and uh, I have not tried any I have tried them let me rephrase that I've not tried any of my own but I have tried a couple of different ones that uh, were released to Ohio and uh, they released five of them and only four of them came to Ohio so uh, it's a very very good product I will say I'm a Maker's Mark guy 46 is one of my favorites. Albert is too. We tried that. To, yeah, we, well, we tried that together. Yes, we, we did. did. A show on 46. Yes, we did. I like 46. I'm not a fan of the normal. I, no. I am not. Now I just had too uh, sweet for me. I just had a uh, cast strength uh, recently that was very very good. Mm -hmm. So uh, since the introduction of the Maker's Mark 46, wood stays have become our tool choice of unlocking amplifying natural flavors. Already presents our classics, Maker's Mark always. Uh, uh, purpose. Oh, what's that? What is that word? I'm sorry. I didn't even pronounce it. Purposefully. Purposefully. Okay. Sorry, kids. Um, and with the specific <laughs> taste in mind, uh, says Bowie, there is Maker's Mark 46 uh, about creating a bolder Maker's, and the 2019 release was all about boasting the notes in baking spice and fruit. Um, 2020 release has been. Uh, a quest of, to the amp of, up of those rich vanilla and buttery caramel flavors typically stem from the unique approach seasoning our barrel wood uh, outside the full year. So um, let me see here. Sorry. Jennifer so they're Bonks, adding. Jennifer Bonk says she's sipping one of the West Virginia editions right ah, now. What nice. Does she have? What does she have? Nice. Which one? Boy tells us that 50 to 60 staves, trials, uh, and 100s. Of more blending and to settle uh, the final expression. This is the first time that we've ever really blended and we didn't uh, start out to do that, she says. It was just the road that we went down and where we're trying to go. So create uh, extra vanilla caramel uh, bourbon just to enjoy spice and to tie it all together. The final blend using uh, two staves but three final liquids as this one stave and stand out bourbon at, at two different points of the aging process. So uh, we'll see what happens. So, um, so they're putting they're putting uh, stave pieces in the barrels. Correct. For extra wood surface. Extra or? right for different flavors and different things like that. Interesting. Okay. So. All right. Well, I like lots of wood in my whiskey. Amen. Here you go again with the wood, Doug. Oh, shit. Well, it, it makes... Um, Jennifer says she's doing West Virginia series number one. Uh, Steve Williams says he loves what Maker's Mark is doing. It's bringing more whiskey lovers out of the woodwork. It is. <laughs> Perfect. Hey. Hey. He could write for the show, I think. 
Bring him in. Nice. Okay. What do you got, Doug? Well, Tillamore Dew, that those Irish guys, um, they released uh, three new single malts uh, to their brand. And, uh, well, one single malt and then a, a single grain whiskey. The single malts have undergone a rare cask combination of maturation, uh, matured in ex bourbon cask before being transferred to a mix of ex Oloroso sherry butts and ex port pipes and ex Madeira drums. So the 14 year old expression will retail for about 59.95 pounds. Albert, what's that in dollars? That's uh, uh, about 14 quid. <laughs> forty bucks? About forty bucks? Uh, about two fifty. No, no, dollars Damn, probably Lightness more. Monster. It's gonna, you know, probably about seventy-five. Oh, so the pound is higher than the. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, the fourteen-year-old expression will retail. Yeah, well, we covered that. So Phoenix is their blend of a pot still single malt and grain whiskeys, and has been seen uh, has seen a finishing period in American oak casks. So I'm assuming that's uncharred, and uh, it's been launched to celebrate the second anniversary of the new distillery at Tillamore, which was which was built by uh, owners William Grant and Sons and began production in August of 2014. Uh, Misunderstood whiskey becomes the first domestic brand to join Sazerac's mm. growing 375 Park Avenue spirits portfolio. And so they're adding their ginger spiced whiskey. Ginger spice? What happened have to you ever had and baby spice? Yeah. Uh, have oh, you, I'm sorry. Have Donald you Trump had? arrested them. <laughs> and they're, they're having out uh, the Marianne spice is coming out next year. <laughs> no. But, uh, it's been, hey, Greg, have you had that? Have you ever <laughs> bought that or tried it? Oh, well, when I was What's in college, it? I tried Marianne, but, uh, yeah, well. No, the, the <laughs> ginger spiced misunderstood whiskey. I have anyway, not. I have not. Uh, so. Apparently, they've joined uh, financially. That's been uh, they've joined with Sazerac and their 375 Park Avenue. That's, be, that's Spirits interesting because you know Sazerac. A lot of people don't know Sazerac owns Buffalo Trace. They're they're, they're the yeah. top dog. So and um, hmm. yeah, so they anyway, it's part of that portfolio, but it, it sounds like that whiskey, that misunderstood ginger spice, has been very popular. That's what got the Sazerac's attention. because Sazerac Rye is fantastic. You know, I just... I'm I, wondering if Jennifer Boggs has had that. So, I mean, Je I was drinking Sazerac mm. Rye before the show. Jennifer has not Can't commented tell. on it. Well, she, she won't because she's on a 30 second delay. She's so on a 30 second delay, but she did say she was never a Makers fan until the Wood Stage series came along. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the Wood good. Stage, the Wood Stage series is very good. Um, I have everything but the milkshake, and I have yeah. tried several of them, and they are exactly what they are supposed to be. I hear well, that brings all the girls to the yard. But go back to you. <laughs> Uh, we talked about this in a previous, so I won't go into too much detail, but I'm just reminding everybody that James Beam Distilling relaunched, relaunched their old tub bourbon for a limited time. Correct. A tribute to its first groundbreaking whiskey. So, James Beam, what are you drinking? That's what it says right here on the old press tub. release. Old Jim, tub. Jim Beam, yeah. it says. That's, yeah. that's the... Uh, oh, Jimmy James. James, James, James B. Beam. Beam just you never know when to switch from Bob I to Bobby know. and I get those <laughs> Rob and Dick. Well, we, <laughs> we did a whole episode once on... The, on Old Tub. On Absolutely. the uh, family relationships. Doc, in I'm the sorry, I'm Mr. American Dr. Whiskey. Hyde and Jack, uh, Jack Daniels over here. So, and uh, Ardbag has just Ooh. come out with the Ardbag five-year-old. Now... Ooh, that might be a good age for a bourbon, but that is very young for a Scottish whiskey, specifically a peated Isla single malt. So they call it probably very appropriately the Wee Beastie. So uh, just released in August, we'll get a chance to be um, it'll be in the states. Um, it doesn't say. I think and then it said, oh okay. By the end of the year, matured an ex bourbon and Oloroso sherry casts. We BC bristles with an intense aroma of cracked black pepper, sappy pine resin, and sharp tangs of smoke. I believe I believe that, and uh, it's 
got a long, salty mouth coating and finish <laughs> that slinks away slowly. Here I'll I go bet then. at five years old, I'll, I'll bet that is the case. But I bet you that's know. what Jeffrey Epstein said. That's a wee beastie. Yeah, we go. And I'll bet that um, I would probably like to try that. I mean, it might be even a bit for me, but I, I, you know, I'm always willing to give it a go. So anyway, that's it for the news, I guess. I have one more. Uh, oh, you so, got more? Yeah, okay. So oh, sorry. Jim Beam, eighth generation distiller, Freddie No, began blending his top oh, yeah. shelf bottles in the Little Book line. Uh, yes. He was all about yeah. experimentation, drawing on creative malt and corn whiskeys, and using rare old <laughs> barrels from the company's stock around the content, uh, continent. Excuse me. Um, the first two releases played a, a blending in a way that Jim Beam has never had, uh, but last year's chapter and this year's chapter four, an ode to the man who taught Freddie his family craft. Uh, uh, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, and that no family is known for this year's release. Uh, excuse me. This year's release is, is an ode to my dad and the lessons that he has passed down to me about bourbon and life, all which I hope pass down to our own children. Pretty no said uh, a lot of them go back to honestly and integrity that he taught me to be true to the uh, true to myself and which is something that is very important to our family and uh, to know that when to slow down and be patient dad's values carry over into whiskey brands I am a proud on, uh, honor him to him with this special blend so chapters four three completely different whiskeys double uh, a four-year-old Kentucky straight rice bourbon rice bourbon. rice an eight-year-old Kentucky the? Straight High Ride Whiskey. And high Ride, there we go. Yeah, and a seven-year-old Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, all mixed it with one one man in mind. The brown rice bourbon, Freddie says, reminds me uh, of the first project he distilled solo after years of working under his father. Uh, while rye whiskey stares a memory blending of Booker's Rye, the first limited well, edition. No. He wasn't going to be the brown rice. Uh, That's all right. Relax on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the first limited edition project pair worked together. <laughs> and, of course, the Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey is one of Freddie Founds uh, of Jim Beam's small batch line with samples tasted and selected unknowingly by Fred before, uh, before they went into blend. So... I know that that is out right now. Uh, the release features flavors of full-bodied brown sugar, rich charred wood, and dried cherries. Retasting notes from the distillery. The, fish, the finish is soft and decadent and leaving warm caramel taste on your tongue, followed by a spicy finish like all Booker's and Little Book releases. It's a bottled, uncut, unfiltered at 122.8. Oh my God! 122. Oh. oh. So that's all the Yikes. good news. That's all That'd the good be smoking. That's all the good news. But if you find it, it's 125 dollars a bottle. I'm sure you'll have some soon. A dollar for I every will. proof, I huh? Will. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I, I think we need to wrap this up. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page if you've not done that already. Follow us on Facebook. If you have any questions or comments, if you want to be a guest on the show, you can comment on Facebook or you can email us directly at thewhiskeyroundtable at gmail.com. And, uh, That's gmail.com. Big G and gmail.com. Closing quote for today. Oh, I love these. These are the best. Okay. Um, this one, com we've had a few from, from him. This also comes from uh, George Burns. I love George Burns. Uh, it takes only one scotch to get me drunk. The trouble is I can never remember if it's the 13th or the 14th. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So long, everybody. We are your hosts, Big G. Karen Helen Keller. Doug Dunbar. And I'm Albert Santilli. <laughs> Till next week. Have a safe weekend. Drink responsibly. We'll catch you next week. Thank you very much for the long, everyone. Bye bye. All right. Thanks for joining. If whiskey stopped working, every bar in town would be closing their doors. 
shutting down Everybody would be trapped with their thoughts Cause nothing knows a thing Like bourbon or scotch, oh no Stopped working, where the hell would I be? Probably wasting lots of money trying therapy. If whiskey, whiskey stopped working, what the hell would I do? Honestly, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't be over you. Jack D would be out of a job Jameson and me would be cut off Hank Williams songs wouldn't make any sense Yeah, this whole damn world would be a mess Oh yeah Oh yeah, yeah If whiskey, whiskey stopped working with it What the hell would I do? Honestly, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't be over you. Whiskey stopped working. Whiskey stopped working. Oh. Whiskey stopped working. Whiskey stopped working. Oh. Whiskey stopped working. Whiskey stopped working. Oh. If whiskey, whiskey stopped working, where the hell would I be? Probably. Leaving Tennessee